Hello, Rob. Ah, Lisa, uh, did you find my special watch? Yes, I've got it right here. Oh, thank heavens. You know, I think that silly old watch means more to me than almost anything else. You will look after it for me, won't you? Welcome to Scrap Heap Challenge, the show where an ocean of indigestible scrap is transformed into a fabulous feast of delicious innovation. In this week's semi-final, we're plumbing the depths like never before as we challenge our two teams to retrieve priceless treasures 20,000 leagues under the sea. Well, all right, they're only six metres down. So let's take a deep breath and find out which team is going to be taking the plunge. Rumbling into battle for their second tour of duty are three military vehicle enthusiasts from Berkshire with an appetite for camouflage chaos. Commandeering scrapper veteran Paul and new recruit Czech giving the orders is Captain Bob, so get your oil cans ready for a revamped rusty regiment. Also back with new blood are a team of radio control model makers who rule the skies of Bristol. Well, the school sports hall anyway. Flying into the scavenges, Krez and his new wingman, Russ. With Captain Al in remote control, it's chocks away for the supermodels. Now listen here, you land-loving layabouts. Some thieving bilge rat has plundered my best galleon and sent her treasure overboard. So, my task for thee be to dive to the depths and bring back my booty har ha ha. What he's trying to say is that for this semi-final challenge, we want you to build underwater salvage machines. Oh, that's cool. And you have just 10 hours to make them. So unsheathe your cutlasses. Oh. And go on the sound <laughs> of the gong. Oh. Oh. Are you joking? Underwater salvage. Come on. Could be a tricky one. Perez is correct. With our three treasures six metres underwater and weighing 15, 30 and 45 kilos and each a very different and awkward shape, our teams will need to think before they sink. I think we start off with something that floats. What do you think? A boat, yeah? We've got to make something to sit in. Four people. Some barrels, ideally, do you yeah, reckon? Yeah. And then some sort of rig. And the other option is, is one of us dive down and actually pick up the object from the sea. Like a, a grappling hook type you're, you're, thing? Yeah. Maybe something that actually... One of them? Yeah, yeah. 20 feet down oh, is well, a long way. It's it's diving bell, then. Don't fancy it. Actually. We need an expert. <laughs> <laughs> Working underwater is no picnic, so we brought in a pair of marine salvage supremos to help keep our teams shipshape. Helping the supermodels get their heads around water is a Scotsman whose family firm adapt construction tools to help retrieve treasures and trinkets from the deep. Please welcome on board expert Paddy Crawford. Hi, mate. How you I'm Alex. Yeah. How you doing? Good to meet you, Paddy. How you doing, boys? What you got here? Well, we've just got the basics, basically, you know, really. We've got a winch going on, some sort of thing to claw it with a nice some sort of grappling effect going on. Yep. And some form of propulsion to get us to and from the shores. Oh, that looks... Mm. Perfect. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, cool. we've just got to make sure that it's going to be big enough and that yeah. we can open and close it. So our two yeah, things. Yeah, so, yeah. What, what about winching it out? Are you thinking um, yeah, motorised well, winch or No, no. Hand? I think hand. Just keep it nice yeah. and simple. So yeah. I think hand, hand like pulling. we could use maybe car hubs. The boys' experience is showing with their expert just having to tweak their simple design. They want to build a pontoon onto which they'll mount a crane. From here, they'll lower a grab that will clinch the treasure before winching it back to the surface. It should be stable and strong, but... Just as with fairground favourite, the toy grabbing claw, holding on to your prize can prove very frustrating. Stowing away with the rusty regiment is a Geordie diver who made it his mission to salvage Donald Campbell's bluebird wreck from the murky depths of Coniston Water. 
So our little scrappy C will be a cinch for fearless expert Bill Smith. I mean, if you've got awkward shapes, what's the best thing in the world to pick them up with? Your hands. Your hands. I said right. the diving bell, but they laughed at me. Well, it's not the, not the worst idea. No. Are you sort of about some sort of hat thing that you can put on, you can breathe in and you can... Well, it's just a diving bell, isn't it? Then you've got to go down. But if it stops there, you've oh, got yeah. total mobility yeah. there. Yeah. If you're pumping air mm. to the diver and the diver's got spare air, you can always take a bag and blow it. The Rusties may have been half joking about the diving helmet, but Bill thinks their idea might just hold water. Or should I say air? If, if there's an object here, you don't have to position the boat over the top of it. No. You can follow the diver about, and if this object then emerges here, you've just got to get it with a boat hook. The plan is for someone to go overboard wearing a homemade diving helmet, breathing air supplied from a boat above. He'll attach airbags to the booty and send it to the surface, but they'll need to retrieve it fast, otherwise it could be returned to sender. So we need a shopping list. First thing we need is something to move some air. A tin of baked beans and bob. Yep, that'll do. For the boat, piping of some sort, or drums. We're going to need something I can stick my head in. A dumpy gas bottle or something we can blow one end off it. Oh yeah, we need a few pulleys, don't yeah, we? Yeah, something with two rollers on it or something, yeah, you know, like, so an engineering rollers. block. Yeah. And see if you can find some, um, some neoprene rubber. Any sort of steel framing, but as long yeah. as try and keep it lightweight, lightweight as it's possible. Strong, yeah. Yeah. Clock's ticking, lad. Just go for it, eh? Right, go, go on! Go, go, go. Come on. So it's all terrain anchors away, but which crew will salvage a place in the final? We've challenged our semi-finalists to retrieve three trickily shaped treasures from our six metre deep mini ocean, and they've plumped for very different solutions. Bristol supermodels and their Scottish expert Paddy agreed on a remote control contraption. So they're building a big raft that will support a crane and grab to pluck the prizes to the surface. In contrast, Berkshire's Rusty Regiment and their Geordie expert, Bill, are taking the plunge. <laughs> One of them will wear a homemade diving helmet and breathe air pumped down from a boat above. Airbags will do the lifting. Oh, yeah, they are chewing biscuits down there. Eh? Is that what's going on? Gas bottle, gas bottle. Have you found something? It's way too soon for a tea break, and with new recruits on both teams, the scavenge starts brightly. Do you think we'll be needing this? <laughs> I hope not, mate. It's small. Well, I liked it. Flying on a full charge, it's the model-making Bristol boys who are first to land on target. Pipes. Hey, hey, we've got our flotation, mate. I think it needs to be absolutely perfect. Yeah, Chris, oh. all. Go on, Chris. Yeah, we found some uh, big pipe about probably 15-inch diameter. Three big sections. Bring it in anyway, we'll have a look at it. These may look like simple water drainage pipes, but these boys have a reputation for creative recycling. What with this for building the end? When they first came to the heap, we asked the supermodels to make a motorbike. Could be good for something. Without using any parts from a motorbike. Built around a tiny electric engine and a car subframe, the result was something to be admired. It's quite aesthetically pleasing to do it. At the track, some sharp handling and last corner drama meant success for the supermodels. Yes! On returning to build a jet fuel firefighting rig, they had horrible luck. We got her? Yeah. Scavenger John lost his footing. You're right, John. His broken wrist meant the end of his scrap heap road. What happens now then? Carry on without him. Go for it. The boys were shaken but stirred themselves to build a brilliant foam blaster that spurted them into this semi-final. Supermodels, hey. welcome back to the heap, or Thank you. in Russ's case, welcome to the heap. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for uh, jumping in after poor old John Breaker's wrist. Is he all right? Yeah, yeah he's all right actually. He's fine. He's just a bit disheartened, but, but he's not here. But yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So okay, so you're gonna have the floating platform crane on the top, and yep. is the crane gonna go over the edge or down through it's the middle? Through the middle. Yeah, we're basically building a platform square with a hole in the centre. Okay. And we're gonna go down through the centre and work from from the middle. So. Well, look, I'll get out of the way. Let you get on. See you okay, later, guys. Thank you. Mate, you float a few tons with this stuff. These pipes might float Russ's boat. Sinking, Paddy. But expert Paddy's having doubts. So is that yeah, all the pipe there that's is? That's all there is. Might just, it might. True. I mean, both of those will probably go under the water with all our 
with our weight on it. While the supermodels worry about getting wet feet, the rusty regiment can't wait to dive in. I've got the wet suit we need, that's the neoprene, it's all the neoprene we need, boys. The expert wants to know, is it the right size for him? He's going to have to lay off the pies if he wants to get in this thing, mate. He's going to have to lay off the pies. <laughs> now he's ate all the pies. <laughs> Bob. Bob, I found a cement mixer for the breathing helmet. It looks big enough. <laughs> Fundamental problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> Paul may need new glasses, but check zoomed in on a little beauty. Oh, on me head! It's an old propane gas bottle, just about right to fit a rusty head. Chuck it. I'll take that back to the boys. You got a gas bottle, did you say? Yes, I've got a gas bottle and we've got the neoprene suit, and I'll bring it back now. Then you can get off your backside, stop drinking tea and do some work for once. Can you bring a beer back with you? A less than dynamic work rate was a strong feature of the Rusty Regiment's last visit. Oh, toilets! Come on, boys. We challenged the weekend warriors to make a boat built for speed. What we got was the slowest scavenge in scrap history. <laughs> Just trying to work out how long, you know, roughly how long you're going to be. As long as it takes. We can't do any quicker than that. But these boys are no fools, and they kept their boat simple. At the test lake, their creation carved past the opposition. But since that stunning victory, heavyweight scavenger Mario has been under the weather and has stepped down from the team. With check-in as a sub, they're in the semis and scavenging well. Ooh. Look what I got you. <laughs> You've got to wear that on your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, watch. That yeah, gas bottle know. needs an air supply. Ah. Well, can't be that lucky. That's not going to work, is it? And Keen Nose Check has sniffed out an electric compressor. But that gives the Rusties a power problem. We, we can't have an electric one. With the test taking place on water with its highly conductive properties, running 240 volts out of the Rusty's electric air compressor could produce a rather shocking result. So they'll need to find another way to power their compressor's pump. And cheeky new recruit Czech has come up trumps. That looks good. All right, isn't it? We engine. Oh, that's nice. Nice little engine. That's very nice. So this engine's going to do what? It's going to drive what? Well, what we're going to do is we, we've got this little air compressor at the moment, but it's yeah. electric powered and right. we don't want the electricity in the water because it's no. a bit horrid. Is that going to compress enough air to pump down a tube to a diver underwater? Expert says yes. Expert says yes. The expert says yes. Just expert as well as an expert, really, isn't it? Absolutely. So yeah. then it, what, and that goes down into what? Not just into his mouth, then it goes into some sort no, of. No, no, a propane gas bottle. Yeah. And he puts it on top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's going to be less teams desperate to have a go in this particular challenge. Yes, I'll see you later on, guys. They're sending a man into the briny deep with an old gas bottle on his head. I'm glad that safety is coming first. We've got a marker, I think we can mark it around. Of course, safety does come first, which means that as the only qualified diver in his team, it'll have to be expert Bill that wears the diving helmet. Diver one calling topside. It's been a slick start for the Rusties. It's a treat. Oh, that's a good bit. But it needs to be when the opposition's the supermodels. I reckon if we get Alex to sit on it, it'll straighten out. <laughs> the super scavengers are having a ball as they bring in box section, angle iron and lightweight girders galore. Get your iron. Get your iron. Even the captain and expert have chipped in, finding use for a piece of airport luggage loader. We could use this for um, our pivot for our A-frame. Yeah. If we just knock the two rollers off, yeah. we can just mount these two um, bearings onto a yeah. flat bar or something. Yeah. It'd be quite simple. I love it, Lisa, when we get to this stage in the build, you know, there's two teams here that actually know what they're doing, know how to do it, get on with it. I mean, the scavenging for the supermodels, I mean, there's tons of stuff in that build. They're a bit short of pulleys. They need a lot of pulleys and they've got one bent wheel and a bit of rust. <laughs> I think Russ double pulley. It's interesting, one thing, with, with both teams have new members, obviously the supermodels got Russ because John broke his wrist. That looks nice, definitely have that. And it's really changed the dynamics of the team. Yeah. I, think, I think they're really kind of almost more enthusiastic and almost have more to prove because they're new team members. Yes, so. and the new team, I mean, Czech is just, well, I mean, he's slightly bonkers. Is he? In the, in the nicest possible way. He's absolutely bananas and he's very, very excited about being in the team. <laughs> The excitement is more focused in the supermodel sanctuary as their Ralph takes shape. 
No, it's perfect. It should be strong enough. Yeah. Take the weight. Oh, hey guys. And the scavengers have hit the pulley jackpot. Uh, what do you think? We're, we're a bit concerned they might be a bit heavy. Oh, that's the boy. Those pulley blocks may be low tech, but they're a crucial find because it's these that will boost the power of the supermodel's grab. Oh, that's awesome. Well done, guys. Pulleys are a way of giving ropes gears. Each time a rope is passed between the two pulley blocks, it shares the load it has to bear. So, three loops means a sixth of the effort, making the winch winder feel six times stronger. Paddy wastes no time stripping those pulleys apart so he can start on the super's grab. Even though it's only that grab the boys are sending to the bottom, any time a challenge involves deep water, we have to be on full danger alert. So we've brought in one of the most experienced salvage and diving experts in the business to be this week's judge. Keeping a highly trained eye on our two teams is an ex-Navy diver who once held the world record for a simulated dive in a compression chamber. He's judged a diving challenge before in the early days of Scrappy, so it's great to welcome back Dr John Bevan. Welcome aboard, John. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Eight years. Yes, gosh, goodness me. Mm. But now, I, what I love about this particular challenge is, and we just said, there's stuff at the bottom of a lot of water, you've got to get it back. And they've gone for completely different approaches. Oh, that's the one, isn't it? That's it. The supermodel certainly seem to have rushed ahead in terms of the equipment they've got in there. They've mm -hmm. got a lot of stuff. No, they, they've got sort of uh, grown-up Meccano bits to put together, quite heavy-duty engineering there. Mm. It's fairly uh, straightforward. Whereas the uh, rusty regiment with their diving equipment, that's a bit more fiddly, a yeah. bit more technical. Far too big. Now, with the airbags that the Rusty Regiment are going to use, I, I'm not quite sure I understand that. It literally works like a balloon, does it? Is that uh, how the exactly. idea? Exactly. Hello, Bob. I've just struck gold with the old tarp, mate. I think we are, uh, we've got everything we need and more for our airbags, mate. It's those airbags that will do all the hard lifting work for the Rusties. To lift an object with a submerged weight of one tonne, an airbag needs to be filled with enough air to displace just over one tonne of water. As it then slowly ascends, the water pressure around the bag decreases, allowing the air bubble to expand, providing even more buoyancy, accelerating the process. You can have bags of any size. You can have uh, one tonne up to 20 tonne. Wow, that's extraordinary. But a, but a, a cubic metre of water weighs a tonne. Exactly. Uh, that's the beauty of the metric system. Yes. It's so easy to convert from volumes to weights, yeah. to measures, to lengths, etc. There you go. This, right, is, this is one of them. Is that the sort of size you've got in mind? Yeah, that will get it shifted. If you had to use one of these machines to salvage something important, who well, would you go with? Uh, at this stage, my money is on the supermodels. Right. They can get in there, uh, get the grab down, bring everything up straight to the surface and get it back theoretically more quickly. Yeah. If they have any problems manoeuvring, then they'll be at a disadvantage right. because uh, the diver doesn't need to be precisely no, located. You can, you can just, just drop, drop him in and he'll wander around and do the job. Yeah. But he's got more work to do. He's got lifting bags to attach. He's got to inflate the lifting bags. Lifting bags have got to be brought to the surface. The treasure's got to be transferred to the boat. So there's a lot more jobs involved in their bringing it to the surface. Yeah, it's, it's a boat. I'm not a boatologist, but I reckon it's a boat. The judge might not rate the regiment's chances, but he doesn't know the Berkshire Battlers have found a little river runabout, which will hopefully float the rusty crew and kit. Although, judging by those holes in its hull, it was scrapped for a very good reason. I'll grind that up and stick a patch on there. No, 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 no. We, we get all the guts out of the electrics. And then what I've seen do. Bob and Paul are tackling the tricky business of how to couple the little petrol motor to the compressor. Take him off to start with, let's have a look what we got. Then we'll offer that onto there. They've decided a mini drive shaft is the best way to join the two components. Um, if we go direct drive, that's what I'm that's what I'm Yeah, but if prefer. we go direct drive, we've got to have it absolutely smack on. Scavenger Paul knows just what to do. He's realised a car's steering column has just the right size flexible coupling for their mini drive shaft. And after a brief and fiery attack with the gas axe, the superheated car part is recovered. Don't mess that one up. Ow! I said don't mess that up. <laughs> you wouldn't know it from his teammates' chuckles, but poor Bob has a nasty burn on his fingers. So it's off to see the scrap medic. 
Oh, pain. Now it seems Bob's pain may be in vain, as expert Bill's got a better idea for joining the engine to the compressor. I'll be tempted to get a pulley that'll go on here. We can, put a, we can put a weld on it so it won't come off. And we've already got a pulley on that one. We've got a frame on here. We can put a couple of bits of box on, stand it on the top. And we're in business. I've got to look for a pulley. Find a little pulley and a short belt. Right, we'll see you soon. <laughs> you won't. We're better. We're running I out won't. of time. Go on, go on. <laughs> get your finger out. So a man down, and now an unscheduled redesign, means Paul is back on the scavenge. Can't get at anything. They'll be hoping their opponents are in similar disarray. Ow! See that end pocket that's made for it? Straight in, nice. Looking good. Perfect, I think. Dream on, Rusties. The supermodels are in total scrap control. Leave a space in between and weld a five, six mil steel plate top and bottom. Good, good pan. And now heavy plywood's been plundered to cap the pipe ends and keep those big tubes watertight. What you got, boys? guys. Bit of plywood for the ends. Bit of plywood. Oh, nice. Supermodels. Uh, this is starting to look like it's taking shape rather nicely. Yeah, it's yes. getting there. Yeah. Do you think you can have enough flotation to keep that afloat? I've done the maths. Yeah. I'm pretty confident we should have around two tonnes of buoyancy. Do you think your team are all right, actually? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm delighted. I mean, young, energetic guys, I mean, what more could you ask for? Got all the parts here, and we've just got to put them together now. Happy, smiling supermodels. Yeah. It's good to see. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, Cheers, Cheers. guys. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Next job for the boys is making support frames that will clamp together four lengths of pipe. When that's welded up, yeah, yeah. that's going to be sweet as yeah. As usual, the model maker's keen eye for detail pays off. Um, looking good. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. It's been a great morning for the Bristol boys. But not for their opposition. Can they take a deep breath and get back on board? Diver one, diver one. Hello. Hello there. Or will the supermodels send them home? Yeah, oh yeah, that, that's easy. And our semi-finalists have plumped for wet and dry ways to retrieve these trinkets from the bottom of our six-metre deep blue sea. Pontoon action. The high-flying supermodels from Bristol and Paddy, their Scots expert, are building a big raft that will support a crane and grab that should get a grip and keep them dry. Really good, guys. That, that looks, looks awesome. like a lot of buoyancy going on yeah. there. So far, not a cut or a nut is out of place. <laughs> They've even started to relax. Safety trousers. Their opponents, Army Truck Petrol Heads, the Rusty Regiment, are sending their expert bill to the bottom. It's good enough. You can see sick and right. With air supplied from a boat, Bill will be diving in a bodged up helmet. With airbags doing the lifting. But it's been a tough morning, and now the regiment have ground to a halt. It's tough stuff, this. <laughs> Captain Bob was laid low after burning his hand. And Paul's struggling to find pulleys for their compressor's drive. I'm not a happy bunny. Now Bob's back and bandaged, but he's frustrated and frowning. We just need the pulley. I don't know who's sourcing what. Well, I can't put any weight on it. I can't grip it, get it. Just, you know. But there is some good news to lift Bob's gloom. Grab it in, Paul. Paul scavenged an air reservoir for filling the lifting bags, but it's big and makes that boat look even smaller, posing yet more questions. I don't think that are old. Now, John, one of the mysteries for me of the Rusty Regiment is I can understand how the diver goes down and how he put, fills the bag up with air and how the treasure comes up to the surface, but how do they get the treasure from the sort of floating airbag mm. into the boat? It's a potential problem because it's a relatively small boat. They're going to be lifting a very heavy item over the side, so if they're not careful, they're going to capsize the boat yeah. and uh, land on top of the diver. <laughs> Break up the flares. The supermodels, they're doing very well. Right. The boat itself, I was a bit concerned about the boat for, from the point of view of enough buoyancy there. So they've doubled up on the tubes, I'm glad to say, and uh, it, it is now looking structurally strong as well as sufficiently buoyant. Like a glove, mate. Now, I mean, it seems to me that although the, the, the technical difficulty of the grab is obviously their big challenge, 
it's, it's fairly basic mechanics, isn't it? It's not that complicated. Well, it's a very clever design of grab uh, because uh, the, the trick with the grab is that the heavier it is, the tighter the grab holds it. So what we're needing is, um, is a wee eye actually to go down on this end for the rope okay. to be fed through to go onto this first roller. I've got so you, it's yeah. going to go yeah. through there, yeah. round that so, roller. Round this it's one. just that rope running through the pulley blocks, along with gravity, that makes Paddy's ingenious grab the biceps of this beefy build. When the control rope is slackened, the grab's own weight will open up the arms. When the target's in position, tightening the control rope will pull the pulley blocks together with the stiff steel links forcing the arms shut. Then as it's raised, the weight of the load adds extra tightness back through the steels, tightening the control rope, locking the grab shut. It's the supermodels who now have a real grip as that grab starts to look the part. The crucial crane pivot and its bearings are being fixed into position. With winch wheels being made from a pair of mini wheel rims, the build really is storming along. We can just ride a bit wee flat. Is that yeah. thunder? The rain brings welcome relief for Geordie Bill. But not for his team. Paul's finally found some pulleys on an old road sweeper that are ideal for their drive connection, but they're stubbornly staying put. It's got a hell of a hold up. With a place in the final slipping away, it's now or never for Captain Bob. OK. We've got the scavenging good, so uh, but we seem to be disjoint at the moment. We've, sort of, we've got everything we need. We just need to sort of... Finish it all. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Apart from finishing it all, we don't have any problems at all. Yeah. No. Well, I'm sticking with the hat. I've got the hat most of the way there, because that's, that's the one thing I yeah. uh, understand. So. Does yeah. everybody know what they need to do to get this finished? Because yes, I do. Uh, yep. So yeah, let's, let's, do let's, yeah, do let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's going to be drilled out then. Yeah, that's what I mean. It may have burnt his fingers, but with no pulleys scavenged, Bob is giving the mini drive shaft a second chance. So he sets about engineering a union between engine and compressor. To be fair, mate, it's not three bad. I'll never get me hat on with this, unfortunately. Bill hasn't turned hat maker. He's making a collar for his diving helmet out of wetsuit neoprene that's crucial to making the helmet work well underwater. If Bill goes underwater wearing just an upturned gas bottle, the moment he tilts his head to look up or down, the air will start leaking out rapidly, letting water in. So he's adding two metal collars, which will sandwich a layer of neoprene. This will allow air to leak out, but little or no water to leak in. Ah, oh, perfect. You look like a mad monk. <laughs> he is. A rusty regiment, your attention please. You have three hours remaining. Oh, I can cope with that. I thought he was going to say you got 20 minutes. As uh, supermodels, you have three hours remaining. Three hours build time remaining today, thank you. Three hours. So both teams are now marching in step, but with more than two thirds of the day gone, they'll need to stay disciplined. Honesty, trust me. Not pretty, but that'll do. Now that is technically underwater salvage, but real underwater salvage is often done at depths of hundreds of metres with zero visibility in freezing temperatures, which sounds like a lot of fun, but it's not everyone's cup of tea. Perhaps that's why there's some very nifty new machines that can save you the bother. OK, so it's not exactly the North Sea, but this lovely clear water is perfect for me to see an underwater robot in action. And James Douglas, who's this man here, has brought one along to show me. Hi, James. Welcome to Scrap Pete. Hi, Lisa. Now, what are we going to throw into the pool for the robot to pick up? Well, how about your watch? OK. I think. <laughs> there you go. This better work. 
This may look like a wind-up, but James is confident because he's brought along one of the latest underwater ROVs, or remotely operated vehicles, to rescue my watch from the wet, and he's letting me drive. Right, so if I turn this silver dial... Yeah, if you re rotate the silver dial, um, the vehicle will descend and ascend. OK, that's using the propeller in the middle there. That's right, that's the uh, vertical thruster. And then the joystick in your right hand will make the vehicle go in whichever direction you want. Oh, yes. So wherever you move the joystick, the thrusters will push the vehicle. I mean, how big do these get? Because that's quite a little, a little compact one. Do they get much bigger than this? Yeah, they come with about the size of a transit van, and they run out at about three or four million dollars. And uh, they're very capable. They go to about two or three thousand metres down. Not as easy as it looks. Ah, oh, and we've got the camera on the end there, which right, corresponds to... If we get to... this right, there's your watch. Oh, yeah. So we're going to try and hook the watch we're up. We're going to try and pick the watch up with the manipulator. OK. Just very, very gently. Right, forward a bit. Yeah. Forward, yeah. forward. Oh, that's well done. James Bond. That's very good. Right, if you just close the manipulator. Woo! There you go. <laughs> You've got your watch. All you have to do now is bring the vehicle back to the surface. Whee! There you go. Ah, so it's going to come to the edge. There's your watch. There it is. Look at that. That's amazing. There you are, Lisa. And it's still working. Very lucky. Let's hope the teams can do as well. Until now, the supermodels have done very well. But using a gas axe to cut through perspex? It's still not having it. No, don't bother. Right. They want to make a glass-bottomed bucket to see their grab in action underwater more clearly. And for once, Chris is in charge. I've got a cracking idea, actually. If I put that over and screw right through it with silicon in between, that'll clamp yeah, it. Yeah. What do you reckon? Now, John, the, the, the supermodels do seem to be doing very well. They seem to be on time for the build. It looks like they're going to finish well within the time. Yeah, not only that, they seem to be able to build uh, fancy accessories like their glass bottom bucket. Oh, so that's they, right, yes. It's looking down now. That yeah, looks great. That's, that's a nice. lovely little twist, that. Yeah. You know, a nice little accessory. Not bad. The supermodels machine is looking very, very solid. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit, it's got to be quite heavy even before they pull anything out of the water. It's a massive piece of engineering that yeah. uh, it has grown up Meccano. They've really beefed it up. Very recently. It's a solid it? yeah. job. It'd be interesting yeah. if they can get it out of the door. And also their big grappling hook, because I think I envisaged a thing that was sort of like this size, you know, yeah. like a little thing, but it's huge. I'm a, just a shade worried about the geometry. When, right. when I look at it, I think, well, will that actually grab something or will it slide out? On the other side, though, the actual diving helmet itself that Bill's been making is beautiful, isn't it? Oh, I mean, that looks amazing. Th that's going to be a real bit. I think yeah. that's going to look really good as yeah. well. Do you feel confident that the Bill is safe down at the bottom with that helmet on? Is he going to be oh, all right? Yes. Uh, yes, he's going to test it, obviously, before yeah. he dives in anger, so to speak. The way they've got the air delivery system is uh, rigged now is very good. They've got uh, two separate sources of air, one for himself right. and a separate one for the, uh, airbags. the airbags. Right, the lift tank's plumbed in. So they should be able to inflate the airbags quite fast, then once they've got it ready, it Absolutely. will blow up fairly quickly. Yeah, yeah. That's the last of the airbags, boys. Hey! Hey! Now, earlier this morning, when I asked you which team you'd like to use to, to recover valuable treasure, mm. I think you were going with the supermodels then. Have you changed your mind at all? Now that I've seen their grab, the geometry isn't exactly what I was expecting. Uh, so I have some concerns about that. But I still think the, they have the edge. I think that's pretty good, actually, boys. You sorted your regulator out then, Bill? You sorted your... Oh, it's a man from Mars. Uh, teams, your attention, please. The night is drawing in and you have one hour. Bill, wow. the remaining 60 minutes remaining today. Thank you, team. As hours turn to minutes, Rusty Paul has finished some, shall we say, rustic paddles. If I made no prizes... <laughs> oh, that's all good. Naturally, the supermodels version is super slick, but then they barely put a foot wrong all day. Wow, supermodels. This is looking like a supermodel. Fair it certainly play. is, yeah, it's coming on. It's getting there. So basically, you've got all the parts together. Yeah. You just need to 
Yeah, just bring it up. The jigsaw together in, in, in there. Yeah. Do you reckon you'll have so much time left? You're yeah. going to have time to have a little go with this yeah, before the end of the night? Yeah, I think so. In fact, actually, we're looking for someone uh, or something to lift up, maybe. Volunteer. Crez, you know, normally more than happy, but unfortunately, I promised Robert I'll go and have a chat with him about you later on. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow. All right then. Six mil little washers, just like penny washers. So it's just details now for the supermodels. But there are rather more crucial concerns about the Rusty's retrieval system. Now, have you, have you discussed as a team how you get the treasure from the ocean's depths into the boat? I go, ha-ha, lads, get ah. over. <laughs> yeah. Get it's over. <laughs> what I love is the fact that it looks like one of the cleanest builds we've had, and yet... Yeah, you've managed to get completely filthy. <laughs> I can't resist it. <laughs> that air supply for the helmet is almost ready to test. With pipes and valves connected, Bob fires up the compressor. Yeah, just, just one thing, have you considered that uh, the exhaust's very close to the inlet? Bill's right to be concerned. The Rusties need a decent exhaust to get those poisonous fumes away from their air intake. But the Supers are getting their grab threaded with ropes and ready to test. Come up, you need some more. The supermodels this week really have been super. Yeah. yeah they've worked beautifully together. I mean, like a, like a well-tuned orchestra playing Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Well, over the other side, over there with the old Rusty. They have done it. I mean, actually, they've done a really nice job. Oh, oh. <laughs> you know, for all the... Against all the odds. Yeah. yeah. With seconds to go, the Supers try out their mighty grab. Are we going to go for the this conventional no, grab? Yeah, let's go oh, for yeah. this. Ooh! Ooh. Work. Oh, it needs to be heavier. With the grab struggling to hold a simple cylinder, suddenly the Supers badly need some tinker time. So, tomorrow, we need to put some stiffening bars to stop the wiggle on this. Next door, the fumes are safely funnelled upwards. I can hear that now. And the gauges are finally showing pressure. Now Bill can plug in his helmet's air supply. We've got air in the hut. Oh, hair We've got air in the hut. <laughs> what a turnaround. The Rusties have risen from the wreckage. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh can I do that? Oh, yeah, sorry, not a good idea. <laughs> Okay, teams, your mission for today is over. But be ready for tomorrow when we'll find out which team will sink like a stone and which team will cruise to victory. Well done, teams. We can sort that out in tinkering time. The task is to retrieve our three pieces of maritime treasure lying six metres, that's nearly 20 feet, below the surface. The clock starts when they disembark over there and will only stop when they dock over there with all three artefacts on board. Of course, tinker time is frantic as the rusty regiment cover their dive helmet with scrap lead to give it neutral buoyancy and the supermodels give their grab extra bite. Yes, the supermodels and uh, Paddy the Grab realise that the geometry isn't quite right. Uh, it's a very two-dimensional grab, and now they're increasing the base of it by putting on horizontal bars. Right. So it, it can pick up uh, a bigger variety of shapes now. Right. The, the lightest one, the urn, yes. sort of looks like it shouldn't be that hard for them. I think the cannon barrel, I would say, gives them a little bit more of a... That's going to be a real tough one. Yes. And that could just slide out every time they yeah. grab it, if they get it wrong. Yeah. Now, now, with the wheel being the heaviest thing, the airbags are going to be under the, their maximum strain, aren't they, lifting that? Well, yes, there's no shortage of air with this compressor. That'll pop to the surface, but uh, once it's on the surface, it just needs relatively small leaks in the airbag, right. and it loses buoyancy and just come down Starts again. That should be very annoying, yeah. particularly if you're standing underneath. It's dangerous. First to go are the supermodels. After an almost faultless build, can the boys from Bristol make it three wins in a row and take their place in the final? And Rob and the judge will see how they do from their brilliant underwater window. Suddenly, John, it looks rather deep. Yes, it's when you're standing huge. at the top, you can't really tell the depth, can you? Supermodels, get ready to make a grab for scrap heat glory. Three, two, one. And they're off. Oh, look, look that's is quite scary, the giant grab coming down. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Not wasting any time. No. What we're doing on the depth, what we're seeing. I think we're still OK. Yeah. Right, go on, guys. Latch it on. 
What would be like height wise, you reckon? Yeah, no. Your side? No, no, no. Just no. Where's you. You go. Yeah. Now they're closing the ground. They're closing the ground. Come on, you yeah. close the ground. Guys, I think we've got it. Got it. Okay, take right. it careful. Careful. Watch those brakes. Fantastic! Paddy's already got the hang of the grab and it's working like a dream. There we go. Well done, guys. Right. At Lisa to Robert, they have their first piece of treasure on board. I just want to tell you, I'm really glad I'm not a fish seeing that giant hook grappler coming through the water. It does look quite scary from down here. Both forward. Okay, you ready to drop? Yeah, both forward, a bit more. <laughs> it's like a fun fair, isn't it? All oh, right, they've got it. What are we seeing? Got something going <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty heavy. Got a hand? Oh, no, the giant jaws have got greedy. They only want the barrel. We don't want that. Just get the barrel. Hang on. You all right, mate? Yeah, I think we've got it. Slip back and then slip back. Oh, it Ah, oh, that was the uh, problem. Look at that. That was exactly the fear. That was exactly what you said. Mm. Just, just calm down, boys. Yeah. Let's just leave it. Yeah, yeah. This modified grub is much better than their first uh, model. That's working. Oh, yes. Yeah. Perfect. The supermodels are keeping cool. It looks like a brilliant recovery. I think we've got it. Yeah. Now, is it going to stay in there? Yes, I think they've got it this time. Oh, that's brilliant. Mind you, it's got to get out of the water. It could all go wrong. Yeah, yeah, go a bit more. Right, you, you let your slack. Let your yeah. slack. <laughs> oh, got it. That's amazing. What's your head a bit, Russ? What? Yeah. Okay. We couldn't have done better, really. No, no. On the second attempt. Yes. Yeah. Right, whoa, whoa, whoa. They're back on track. Now there's just the wheel to go, which should be straightforward. We need to go to the left a bit, but parallel to the left, really. It's taking their time getting into position with this one. Yeah. Is it on top of the Keep thing? Keep going. No, it's next to it. Russ, go on. Keep going. They're having problems lining it up over that last piece of treasure. And shimmy, shimmy it over to the other bank, Russ, sideways, like. I think that's an official nautical term, to shimmy. OK, we'll spin around on you, Russ. Keep going. We're going to be sideways on, but it doesn't matter. The supermodels are definitely finding that cumbersome raft hard to handle, but they're getting closer. I'd learn now, learn now, learn yeah. now. Yeah, let's go. Right, get on the paddles, get on the paddles. They've got it. Now it's just a sprint to the finish. Come on. Good one. Well done, well done, guys. Well done. The supermodel's winch and grab system was awesome, but they did have problems, especially manoeuvring into position. Even so, the clock stopped with a terrific time of just 7 minutes and 32 seconds. So as brave diver Bill dons his gas bottle helmet, it's the Rusty Regiment's turn to try and book a berth in the final. Rusty Regiment, it's time to bag your booty from the bottom. Three, two, one! Oh, there he is, there he is. There's Diver Bell. Yes, I think it's the only colour gas helmet in the, in the world. He's had to put a lot of lead, as you can see. To hold it on, because there's nothing actually strapping it to his body, is it? It's exactly. just the weight of it holding it down. It's 20 kilos of lead just to keep it on his head. Right. And now he's got the first airbag connected already. That is uh, fast. Oh, yes, he's But now he's giving him a tug. There it yeah. goes. Oh, this should happen quickly. Wow. There it goes. Wow. Whoa. Bob, get your hook. Oh, right, they've got their grappling hook. Yeah, this is interesting because they're doing two jobs at the same time now. One yeah, he's already ready with the next bag, isn't he? Yep. Lisa to Robert, Lisa to Robert. The Rusty Regiment have got their first piece of treasure. And we saw that the boat didn't seem to tip too much when they pulled it in. They're doing a very professional job so far. Bill's already at the cannon and asking for the air to be turned on. Right now, the Rusties are easily beating the supermodel's time. Got the cannon going. Have you already got the cannon coming up now? It's working so fast. There's the cannon. Hook on it. Yeah. In no time at all, Bill's onto the wheel and it's on its way up. So this is the big one. Yeah, up it goes. No trouble. Wow. The wheel's ready to be salvaged, but the Rusties are still struggling with the heavy cannon. Bill's done such a good job, they can't keep up. Come on, boys. <laughs> right, well, that can't stay there forever. If they've no. got any leaks at all, that's right. just going to come back down right. again. Come on, it's sinking. Disaster. Just as the judge predicted, the wheel's sinking and Bill's already surfaced. Is it gone? 
It's gone, mate, I think. No, I don't believe it. Bill's putting the helmet back on and he's going back down to get the treasure again. This is always going to be the problem. If there's any leak in the bag, if yeah. you don't get it out straight away, yeah. it'll just lose his buoyancy and lost it. The Rusties had all but finished. Now Bill has to struggle to refloat the wheel. He looks fine, he looks very happy. He's doing a sort of nice, delicate ballet step as he moves around. I love it. Bill's almost there, but could a leaky airbag have sunk the Rusties' challenge? He's got, it. He's got back up, it's coming up again. Oh, yeah, we can see it, he's up. Come on, Rusty Regiment, you can do it! Right. Come on, paddle! Come on, Rusty Regiment, stop the clock! Well done, guys! Well done! I think I just had triplets. What a fantastic effort by the Rusties, but Diver Bill's sheer speed ended up costing them time with that second dive, so both teams had successes and failures. But who is it that salvaged their way to a place in the series showdown? And the team that will go through to the Scrap Heap Challenge final for 2007 are... The Rusty Regiment! Yes! And if that whetted your appetite, then join us again next week for a drag race of quite awesome proportions. We'll see you then. Our rusty regiment take on other semi-final victors, the Dark Riders, when they move a mountain of metal in a jumbo-sized challenge.